On this episode, we'll be talking about PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. In a graph, the PCR looks something like this, where you have the initial step called denaturation, the second step called annealing, and then the third and final step called extension. In denaturation, heat is used to break apart the two or three hydrogen bonds that are in between the adenine and thymine or the guanine and the cytosine. So when you apply the heat, one strand breaks into two. In the, in the annealing stage, your primers bind to the open regions of the DNA to initiate the next stage, which is extension. DNA polymerase attaches to the annealed primer and incorporates free nucleotides to extend out in either direction, either forward or reverse, relative to the start site. In this way, one strand turns into two strands. And the more times you repeat it, the more strands you get. So in order to make your master mix, you need PCR mix, which includes the free nucleotides and a buffer for the reaction, your forward and your reverse primers, TAC polymerase, water, and your DNA template. Normally, we run reactions either in 10 or 20 microliters to save money, but you can run them as high as 50 or 100 microliters. This is the PCR hood. We use this area to keep contamination out of our samples, and we keep the area clean using bleach and ethanol to prevent DNA contamination. Now you're ready to run a real-time PCR. To get the volumes, you can check here for your, for your sample templates. They'll give you the correct amount of each reagent to add into your microcentrifuge tubes. Now, you always want to keep your samples cold, including uh, primers and PCR mix. This ice bucket has two primers, a PCR mix, and my sample templates. The PCR tubes are in the hood. Get out the right, right amount of MCTs for each sample. Now, Add the correct amount of each primer. Add the correct amount of water. Add your super mix. If you're doing a real time PCR, the super mix should have cyber green in it.
do sample. and choose the correct protocol. Now there are lots of different protocols in this machine so there's usually one for what you want to run but if there's not you can make one yourself. Go to protocol library choose the protocol you want and hit enter. Now first you want to view protocol Make sure it runs how you want it to. And click done. Now go to run protocol. You can choose to hot start it, which means that the plate gets hot before the PCR runs, or not. If you choose to hot start it, you can choose the hot start temperature. It's always algorithmic measurement mode and enter your sample volume. Once you're ready, click begin run. Close the door. A real-time PCR is different than a traditional PCR in that uh, you can measure the amount of DNA created by each, run, each cycle. And you can also look at the temperature at which the DNA melted, which is important for things like differentiating between species. Now, if you want to run a PCR on this computer, click Protogene 6, which is the real-time PCR machine. Click New, and set up your PCR. Choose the rotor. We have two different rotors. We have a 36-well rotor and a 72-well rotor. Make sure your MCTs do not have domed lids. They must be flat lids. Now, you also need negative controls if you're running a real-time PCR, so make sure you load those as well. Put your MCT in the rotor. Label your MCTs and click next. Now, this is the protocol for running it. Everything looks good, so you hit start run and close the door.